Well, since 2011, Minnesota's DFL party has been led by Ken Martin. He was just reelected this month to his seventh term. Martin has presided over extraordinary success. No GOP candidate has won a statewide race in Minnesota since 2006. But there's also a deepening GOP DFL rural urban divide. Ken Martin joins us now to talk about a bunch of things. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. We want to talk about this fellowship opportunity because it's open to anyone in the public. It's the Wellstone Academy. Yep. And you're taking applications right now. It's a paid fellowship to learn how to campaign, basically. Yeah, you know, it, it, I'm so glad to be able to launch this. Uh, as many uh, of you know, I, I started with Paul Wellstone 32 years ago. He's my hero and, and mentor and someone that I learned a lot from uh, about organizing. But last year, I was talking to his son, Dave Wellstone, about how we honor uh, Paul's legacy, especially on the 20th anniversary of his untimely death. And one of the things David said was, look, you know, if you want to honor my dad, um, train the next generation of organizers, because that's really who Paul Wellstone was. At the heart of it, he was an organizer. And so we're really glad to do it. For people who are interested, they could go to dfl.org backslash Wellstone and apply. Yeah, we've got the website. We can show that. And people can just apply. And it's open to anyone. 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 Yeah. Okay. That sounds really interesting. And also, I, I imagine it sort of sounds like it's doubling down on a practice that has worked pretty well for you. I have found, to really to my surprise, that the Democratic candidates in Minnesota are out there doing the things like door knocking, shaking hands until the last minute. The, your GOP friends over there on the other side are not doing right. that nearly as much, and it seems to, to work. Well, we call it the Wellstone way of campaigning, actually. Door-to-door, uh, -door, neighbor to neighbor, person to person, talking about their hopes and dreams. Uh, developing relationships with voters in a real personal way. That's really what Paul Wellstone was about. That's how we've been campaigning the last 12 years uh, since I've been chair. And, and we have had success. And it's because we're building a relationship with voters throughout the state of Minnesota. And, um, you know, we're really excited about, uh, obviously, our success, but more excited about what that means in terms of the legislature right now. Well, we want to take a look first at the congressional districts in Minnesota. We've got a map, and there it is right there. And it's a striking map. I mean, you can see, obviously, that huge area of mm -hmm. red are all Republican seats. Those are all the rural farm areas in Minnesota. And then you've got the Twin Cities and suburbs there, the small blue, but obviously the most populous area of the state. I know that this is a successful formula that, that you have done very well as chair, but is that really good for Minnesota no. and good for the country to have that kind of divide? No, and I think what you just said in terms of the country, this is a phenomenon that's not just endemic here in Minnesota. It's all over the country, frankly. We're seeing the rural parts of the country uh, being, becoming more and more red. You know, it's disappointing to me in my last 12 years is, frankly, that we have lost vote share in greater Minnesota. Uh, once very reliable blue areas are now red. How um, do you get it back? Well, we, we have to be out there competing. We can't ignore it. We have to continue to uh, compete there, recruit candidates and win. And in fact, our legislative majority's last uh, election were delivered by us flipping four seats from red to blue in greater Minnesota. And so we have to keep uh, being on the ground there organizing and we can't give up on those voters. I want to ask you about uh, the likely re-election bid by President Biden. What do you say to Democrats, and I'm sure they've got coming up to you saying, I really don't think President Biden should run again. I, I think he's too old. Well, look, I mean, if, if folks don't think he has a fight uh, in him, then they missed the State of the Union address, where I thought he, he did was look just... especially <laughs> sharp there. He did. Well, look, I thought he was particularly remarkable in pushing back against some of the Republican intransigence, and you know, particularly on Social Security and Medicare. But look, you know, the reality is he, I spent some time with him in Philadelphia a few weeks ago. He's ready for this reelection. He's ready for the fight. And I think he's got a remarkable record of a accomplishment to run on. The narrative of these last two years, there's been no president and vice president that have accomplished more for the American people in their first two years than Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And so I'm excited about the opportunity to talk about that record, what they've done to deliver on the promises they made to the American people. You know, I, I get it, you know, and uh, there's certainly a lot of yearning in our party. There's a new generation of leaders coming up and they will have their opportunity. But right now the stakes are so high, we can't turn this uh, this country back over to a Donald Trump or, or, or Ron DeSantis. Joe Biden gives us our best hope to win in November. Well, he certainly looks like he is going to be running again, so we will look forward to that. He will be 86 when his second term ends, if he, is, if he wins re-election. Yeah. All right, Ken Martin, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And remember, the application is open for those Wellstone uh, camps or Wellstone Academy. Wellstone Academy, yes. All right, thank you so much. Thank Ken. you.